privilege to work with Marty just a short while ago um, in a new ebook that AIM was working to publish. And Marty and the folks at DocuLabs kindly agreed to contribute to this ebook. And, and in this ebook, in, in talking about jobs to be done, Marty speaks very specifically about process mining. And we thought it'd be a great opportunity to have him come here and share a whole lot more about process mining. And just to set that stage, and this is taking a quote from uh, the chapter that Marty contributed, um, that there are, there are opportunities for process improvements throughout all levels of your organization. Process mining provides real-time data and insights into how well or how poorly your processes are being executed. So Marty, I know that there's a whole lot of questions about this and you're just gonna contribute a, you know, about how to make sense of it all. And uh, in looking at this here, how do you make sense of all of this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a million dollar question, right? <clears throat> well, first of all, Teresa, thank you for having me today. I'm super excited about today's webinar. Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to tell you this. My sister's name is Teresa. So this, the format of this webinar is going to be like doing a, a webinar with my sister. Uh, but, you know, if you really look at this workflow, I think a lot of companies experience this, right? And it, it kind of reminds me of, of uh, the, the Chicago building right next door to us, the old Chicago post office. It was built in 1920. And at that time, horses still delivered the mail. Uh, the telephone wasn't really in use. And through the years, that building started accommodating different technologies, you know, such thing as printers, data processors, all those things. And that's very similar to like the way companies kind of build in the processes throughout the years. They start adopting newer technologies. All the technologies have a lifespan and technologies eventually die. And actually getting off different technologies is difficult. And really measuring the impact of those technologies is key. So we'll walk you through exactly how we'll kind of make sense of this. I guess you could call it a little bit of a spaghetti mess. Uh, in the next few slides. Um, to continue on with this, what are you seeing around automation with your clients? So as I mentioned earlier, every few decades, newer technologies come along and kind of the current trend right now are, are these five technologies. And all of them kind of have different lifespans and different maturity points. So I'll walk you through kind of a few of them to kind of see, to say what we're seeing in the marketplace right now. Process mining, which is the topic of today's webinar, is really one of the newer technologies out there on how to digitalize your processes. And one, when one technology we left off is analytics. And analytics is actually built into process mining, and I'll also touch on that a little bit later. But the next technology here is RPA. RPA, RPA really started gaining a lot of traction in 2016, 2017. It's reaching kind of a, a maturity level where companies have implemented it. Some industries have quite a few successes in, in RPA, others industries are are experiencing failures, right? Just due to the maintenance and kind of the, always the changeability of RPA. Intelligent document processing has been around for a while. However, really, I'd say in the last five years, the technology has gone to almost the extreme of really providing a strong ROI. And I would say even for some industries, we're seeing clients that might have looked at this technology five, seven years ago, didn't think it would move the needle. I would say some of the advances that have occurred even in the last year has been astonishing and really are game changers. Natural language processing is one area we're super excited about. This is another technology really in the infancies. And you think about this as it's, it's really a combination of chat bots and video and that whole world is currently exploding. And it's really exploding in, in the consumer realm, but also in the B2E realm, I feel in the next five years, this is gonna be one technology that will have hyper growth, especially on the impact of automation. And smart workflows is probably is one of the older technologies on this list. However, even the capabilities with inside smart workflows 
are ever changing with the adoption of machine learning with inside smart workflows as far as also as analytics evolve. So very exciting time to be in technology and all these technologies are moving so fast. I bet you six months from now, if we had another webinar, I'd have a different opinion on all. We'll have to have you back for another webinar then. Um, this is a really good overview of intelligent automation, um, but what more specifically is process mining? since you did mention that this is a newer technology. Yeah, process mining is really a combination of, of multiple technologies from artificial intelligence, analytics, and automation. But really what process mining is a digital x-ray of your process. And these process mining tools create that digital x-ray mainly by combining only three data elements. If you can believe that, Teresa, only three data elements can really recreate a process. And those three data elements are a unique identifier. So think of it as a customer number or claim code if you're in the insurance industry. It also needs an activity code. So to discuss what type of activity you're actually doing, what step in the process, as well as uh, uh, the last step is a time stamp. So really determine the amount of time from each activity for that specific transaction. If you have those three data elements, you could create your own digital x-ray of your process. Okay. Um, with this, how specifically do you use this? You, would a business put this into practice? Yeah, so uh, as a, as a consulting firm, right? A lot of the big consulting firms don't like this technology because it really takes revenue out of their pocket, mainly because if you think about the old way of re-engineering a process, whether that's just implementing some new workflow or actually doing a complete digital transformation and, and reimagining your ERP system, it always starts with the current state assessment. And what happens is an army of consultants will come in interview any, everybody at the company. This will take anywhere from three, sometimes six months. And what they will do is they would create a process flow, very similar to the one we have on the slide here on the left. And you look at that process flow once, you may make some decisions off of it, it may come with some notes, but really after that point in phase in the project, you move on and you start going on to me. Process mining completely flips that around and really allows you to look at your process in a real time environment and understand from an objective point of view from multiple source systems, what is your process, what data is driving your process, and really how to monitor that process continuously. It's question that I have with this, then it's more than just where you talk about the process mapping for the image on the left, that's relying on people to remember the steps, you know, how is it documented versus how they do it. And it seems like what you're saying is that the systems are telling you what's actually happening. Is that like a fair way of looking at it? It's, it's a very fair way of looking at it. In okay. fact, there's no hidden, hidden secrets anymore, right? When you, I remember doing process interviews, you talk to a, a team uh, that owns the process. One person would potentially have the loudest say in the group for a variety of reasons. And that person's issues would get all the attention. And you really only look at that one variant of the process. And everyone leaves the room saying, well, what about me? Now, with, with process mining, everyone gets to say. Okay. So um, how do your clients typically find things um, once they perform process mining in with their processes? So I, I really love this slide. I, I think this slide is amazing as much as a, a slide can be amazing. But if you think about this slide, right? On the left, you have your, your, this, the, the design of your process, the way you want it to be. And all the customers want a straight through process, whether it's internal or external customers, they want seven simple steps to go through to get the refund or to process their order. However, 
internally, obviously, you have to you have to adjust to the client's needs, and you start creating these perceptions of, oh well, we'll change a step in the process to accommodate this customer, or we'll change a step to accommodate this vendor, and from a, a user standpoint of view and a process owner standpoint of view, they think about that as there's only a few of those variants, maybe five, and it only occurs over a few couple transactions. Where in reality, when we put the process mining tool in place, it looks more like the map on the right. And I would say, in fact, 100% of the time, you're gonna get more of a map like this. And what's amazing about this is, it helps clients really identify the true impact of their process inefficiencies, right? So, you know, as I said earlier, right, customers want that straight through processing, right? And they want it right the first time. So, for example, you know, I have one client in the staffing world. They process 100,000 paychecks a week to their temp employees and to contractors, right? Think about that, 100,000 payroll checks a week. What if you get 99% of them right? Sounds really good for most industries, right? Anything 99%. I wish my kids would get 99% of some of the tests, right, Teresa? But when you're processing somebody's payroll check, if you get that wrong, especially underpaid, you hear about, right? So what process mining allows you to do is really look at those individual transactions that are causing the errors and be able to fix them. Because I'm also thinking when I look at this, you know, yes, an ideal dream to have a straight through processing. And I used to think of things, you know, a few years back of when you look at all of your exceptions, and if you keep seeing enough of the same exceptions, turn that into a standard process. And it's very understandable to think that that middle column is what's going on. But I would, you know, with the reality and what you're talking about in with process mining, um, just a lot of things that Ames has been talking about with having a better overall, better customer experience and the exceptions, you know, the one-offs here and there to do it this way for this client and things like that, that that really overall helps in other parts of the business. And that crazy map is the reality that uh, we all deal with. And at scale, that um, is frightening to think about remembering all of those details. So in here, you're going to talk a little bit, you know, with the slide title, you know, with the x-ray of, of the process here, um, but how would process mining um, help businesses create more effective workflows? Yeah, actually, I'll give you a client example. You know, we have one client that was, you know, pretty far along in adopting the new workflow technology, and they thought they, their design just wasn't right. And, and they really wanted to kind of pressure test it. So we actually took their data and ran it through a process mining tool and really started to look at how does that old process compare to the new process they're designing inside their workflow system. We call this the, the process health check, right? And in that process health check, we started identifying the root cause. I'll repeat that because that's very important. By identifying the root cause, and if you really look at the, the, the process here in the right here, with process mining, you could start looking at how many process transactions are going through that variant. You also get to see how what, what amount of the cycle time. So is that variant causing 30 seconds of rework? Is that variant causing a five day delay in a purchase requisition? You really start identifying where the root cause is. And then you start investigating it further and you start identifying, well, is this a master data element issue? Meaning that the master data with inside the core system is wrong, which is causing some downstream issues with the workflow. Or is it a people problem? And that people in the field need different type of training and maybe the process needs to be redesigned. Once you start really looking at that data, analyzing that data, 
from there you could start really coming up with a solution that not only you could pressure test again right because this is not an as-is process map this is something you're going to continuously monitor and make sure you're getting the results you want but more importantly you get to prioritize the value of the solutions so what i mean by that is again to go back to my example earlier with inside these workshops sometimes the loudest talker in the room gets their say first and they may say it's the most valuable process in the world they may say that their vendor or their customer is the most important and we need to change things because of that but now with process mining you could single singly uh, exclude that customer or you could include that customer to really understand what is that process for that specific vendor or customer you could understand what is that variant how long is it taking right and then more importantly what is the right solution for the number of transactions going through that process it's truly amazing and it's really a game changer of the way we go about optimizing processes and in fact, not only does it give you more value, but more importantly, these projects, you know, a typical as is process project goes for three, five months. We could complete an end to end process mining project with inside eight to 12 weeks. So not only are you getting more insights, more value, we're doing it in an extremely compressed time frame. I'm realizing just in that eight to 12 weeks, that's a heck of a lot less time than it takes to conduct in-person conversational interviews on what are your processes with that type of baseline assessment. Um, here, talking a little bit about um, you know, process mining applied to P2P. Um, can you walk us through some examples of this? Yeah, procure to pay is a, is a process we're currently doing a lot of work in. And mainly because of the market factors, the issues with supply chain and inflation, companies' procurement departments are really, <clears throat> are, are getting a spotlight shine upon them. Of how do you create value for the organization? How do we ensure less interruptions in the supply chain? Knowing that everyone on this call and webinar today is a procure to pay specialist, what I want to do is kind of walk you through, you know, the approach we take on a process mining project. And I'll pick a few of these. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'll pick a few of them that really apply to, to most processes. The first step in really identifying what, what's the most valuable opportunity there is in process optimization is understanding what KPI you want to measure. And that's key. You know, in the past, you do a project, you'd say, okay, well, here's my business case. And then, you know, you start the project and then really nobody ever goes back and double checks that business case. Well, the process mining, that's gone, right? Process mining, I want to identify what the critical KPI is. And I not only want to analyze that KPI, but I want to measure the impact three months from now, six months from now, a year from now. Right. So let's take employee productivity. Right. Processing time for purchase requisitions is a traditional KPI with inside procurement. OK. When you start looking at this process, you start thinking through again. Right. It should be only seven steps. Why is it taking so long? But by really looking at the data with inside this process, we started to understand that a lot of the rework with inside purchase requisitions isn't necessarily due to the department processing it. It's more due to how the purchase requisitions were getting put into the system. And through additional interviews, we really started to determine that it was the free tax requisition field with inside their ERP system that was causing this issue. So, Again, right, you're thinking about it. Well, what's the right solution, right? Now that you have the data of understanding how many transactions have to actually go through free tax requisitions, you would start identifying, okay, well, what transactions were they? What's that free tax going in that box? Is it really required? 
So a solution we did for this was it was twofold. One is for some of the vendors in, in transactions, we we reduced the amount of free tax requisitions. We actually did autofill. So it was a pre-populated field that they had to choose from, and that was it. For the ones that did require some free tax uh, freedom, what we did was we actually able to take our RPA bot and really able to identify what were the critical terms within inside that free tax requisition and then map it to the invoice where then you still get your three rate match right so this particular case right it reduced the amount of cycle times for purchase requisitions from seven days all the way down to two days so an extreme amount of value in in more important time savings another one i'll touch on here is compliance I, I think every process has some type of compliance regulatory, whether that's either a government regulatory compliance or internal compliance with company policies. Spend under management, especially Maverick spending, is one area we're seeing every company really look at. They wanna make sure that the procurement strategy they have in place is being adopted, but more importantly, being enforced. Now this particular company, it was a manufacturer, they had quite a quite a, a stringent policy on what vendors to choose for materials in their manufacturing process. However, with COVID and the supply chain issues, that kind of put everything on its head, right? And now these plants were really trying to choose who had the quickest supplier could get me the goods and things of that nature, right? However, they were doing this on their own. And this client that hired us really had no idea how bad their Maverick spending was and really had no idea how much was it going against what the contracts they had in place, right? So what we were able to do is really, again, put their process in the process mining tool, identify what transactions were going to vendors outside their preferred vendors list. More importantly, did analytics on top of determining the amount that was going to those outside vendors. And more importantly, this is the key, is identifying who at the plants were making those purchase requisitions to the outside vendors. So obviously a lot of analytical tools are great, but a lot of analytical, analytical tools are always, like I say, it's like the scoreboard at the end of the game. You know who won, who lost, right? Well, with process mining, what we're able to do is really automate the alerts going back and forth. So once a purchase requisition could go in, now we could alert the procurement manager to identify, you know, Marty and plan A is going off and buying things on his own again. We could tell the procurement manager whether or not that purchase requisition is with inside contract price. We could tell them the contractor is going to, or vendor is going to, and more importantly, we could encourage them to collaborate on whether or not this is the right purchase requirement or vendor to use, or if they have more time and wait for a preferred vendor. So again, for this particular client, we identified five million dollars, five five million plus million, five point six million dollars to be precise, of Maverick spend that was being wasted due to company due to employees going outside the Maverick spend policy. There's a lot of information on this slide, and I just want to remind our audience members that um, you can download a copy of the slides um, so that you can read more of this information, um, and that's in the resources link that Nina is putting into the chat box for you. Um, and also feel free to reach out to Marty at any point for asking more questions. Um, this is just fascinating to be listening to this. I realize DocuLabs, you are a vendor neutral, vendor agnostic, you know, independent consultants. How do you help client, your clients find the right process mining solution for their needs? Yeah, you know, I, I don't really think it always starts with the solution. It really starts with their approach first. And what I mean that is it's, it's really, really looking at what problem you're trying to solve and start looking at okay, well, what technology am I gonna to have to really mine data from, right? And there's different process mining tools out there and some are more compatible with, you know, source systems than others, right? 
because you ultimately have to build a data model for this process management tool. And then secondly, you're, you're going to look at, okay, well, what process am I impacting? Are there any out of the box or even as a consultant firm, we have proprietary uh, dashboards ourselves for specific processes. Are there anything in the market today that really fits this process? And then you start going down to, you know, what the right functional requirements are for this software, what the technical requirements are. Do I even want to own the software, right? You don't have to buy process mining tools, right? A lot of our clients don't ultimately want to own the tool. They just want to get the insights. We'll monitor it on a monthly or quarterly basis, and that's all they're looking for. Right, because once you buy the tool, right, another evaluation is, okay, I'm going to have to manage the tool. How many people do I need trained up on the tool? And then ultimately, what's the business case for this? Right? Do I have the business case to take to leadership to purchase a process mining tool? And obviously, you know, depending on if you're going across processes or if you're going from a singular process, that's going to have a major impact on your on your on your determination of what the right approach for process mining tool is so really start with the approach start looking at the process start looking at your system and from there you really start determining well it's not necessarily a tool i need i need the information i need access to the information and i think that's the most important thing to think about is how you're going to get access to that information <laughs> Earlier, you were talking very specifically about procurement. Um, what are some of the other use cases um, th that you're finding great success in with using um, process mining so that the people listening to this can, so they can help make that case to talk to their executives? Yeah, so you know, we've, we've done process mining projects across a variety of use cases. I mentioned uh, staff and firm, we did the time card of cash. We work all the way to the manufacturing plant or the manufacturing line, as well as we, we work quite a bit in financial services through customer services and management. So it, it's when you really start thinking about, you know, what's the best use case, really the best use case you think through is the one that's going to solve the biggest problem. And whether that's kind of customer satisfaction, whether that's looking for value with inside a procurement department to save money, it really all starts with kind of the problem you're trying to solve and really identify what, you know, where's the value, who's the really value inside of that, that process. Okay. You have this handy checklist here and was the, the title of, of what we presented today. Um, what are the five ways that process mining can help your business? Well, you know, Teresa, you, you touched on that first one for, uh, earlier. Is it, it's really an objective, right? There's no opinions. It's There's no emotion. It's all based on the data coming out of your current systems, right? And it's being able to have that, you know, aha moment of clarity of this is what it is, right? Now, looking at what it is, determining where the value is in the data, really determining what variant of the process is causing the most pain or which one could capture the most value, right? And then from there, it's a matter of continuously monitoring it and making sure those improvements that you identified are not only implemented, but they're continuously executed throughout the journey of the process. And I think one of the things that, you know, it's really not listed, but it's kind of implied is the amount of speed and accuracy you're able to do this with, right? The old days of, you know, hiring a consulting firm with an army of consultants are over and whiteboarding this, right? This is all real time, right? Real time transactions, real time process. And you really can't, you know, in the virtual world you're working in, you really can't hide it. Okay. Well, Marty, I just want to give you an opportunity just to talk a little bit about how DocuLabs specifically can help and for people to reach out directly to you. Let me just give you a, a moment to talk about that before I come back with some more questions for you. Yeah. Well, first of all, once again, Teresa and Aim, thank you very much for having me. 
say it's been a, a great webinar. And really, any, anytime you give me the chance to talk about process mining, I'll, I'll take you up on the opportunity. But just to tell you a little bit about DocuLabs, we're a management consulting firm. We really focus on helping companies optimize their process by leveraging intelligent automation tools. And really, we pride ourselves on being experienced consultants and we cover various industries from manufacturing, financial services, insurance, as well as healthcare. And, uh, and that's it. Okay. Well, when you download a copy of the slides, you have Marty's email address here. Feel free to reach out to him. And, um, and I also know on the DocuLabs website, they have a lot of really great resources, blogs. Uh, I love reading their blogs. Um, and uh, some really good articles are linked in that resources document. Um, so just feel free to also open that resources link and open to another web page so you can have access to all the really cool information that we have in there. And um, so, oh, I'm, I'm not seeing the slides ahead. There's a couple of extra things here um, about DocuLabs. Um, so, you know, when you download the slides, you have all this. Marty summed this up all quite nicely there for you. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and take your questions. And I need to turn off a screen share just so I can see the questions coming in. Um, but I had some other questions here myself as, as I start uh, looking at the other questions you all are submitting. So please, everyone from the audience, uh, send your questions in. We have um, a good five to 10 minutes here to talk some more. Um, we all know that um, tools don't always get used necessarily the right way or um, things don't get set up right. What are some mistakes or some things for people to look out for um, the, you, the less than positive things that people could try to avoid um, as they go to use a process mining tool? Well, I think the first mistake we hear a lot is we don't have the data. And I think in the last few years, you know, the notion of data lakes, business intelligence tools, and machine learning, artificial intelligence, it created this I would almost call myth is that you need a lot of data to get data insights, right? With process mining, you don't need that much data, right? As, as I mentioned earlier, if you just wanted a, a traditional process map, we really need just those three data elements. If you want to start doing analytics on top of that, you, you have a lot of that data in your ERP system or any course and workflow system you have. So let's start there. Let's not try to boil the ocean. Let's start with a small data set. And we've had, had one client where we couldn't build out the process flow. In fact, we even had one client where we created, we, we interpreted what their activity codes were because they didn't have them within the side of the system just based off some simple information. And then I would say the second mistake I see clients make is they look at it is only a tool to identify ways to automate a process. This tool gets uh, mentioned a lot with RPA. And although it is good to identify automation pinpoints, it's a better tool to really execute your business processes and, and, and more importantly, monitor those improvements, making sure you're making the business impact. Um. Does process mining work in just one repository, one system? Um, how does it work in connecting the multiple systems for doing this type of analysis? So really, if you think about it, it's an API, right? So you could connect as many systems as you want. In order for that data to be connected, right, you need one common denominator. Uh, but for the most part, it's really just a, a feed like any other type of software as a service uh, platform. Do you see challenges in that accessing, um, transforming and normalizing event log data from multiple systems of record um, for that discovery analysis and enhancement? We do when clients want to bring in a lot of data just to bring in data. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, one client <clears throat> wanted to bring in 
their OCR data logs into the system. And they want to determine, well, what was the long-term impact of those of OCR not identifying the images correctly? And what we were able to determine was when we did the initial process map was A, not only were we able to identify what transactions were coming through the OCR engine, but more importantly, we determined just off of the, the existing data is what transactions were causing the rework and, and what were the customers causing the rework. So then we were able to go back and modify what changes needed to be in, in their OCR system, particularly what data elements needed to have better identification of the images. And we were able to make those changes without bringing in the OCR data because it was just too much data. It would have been more, more effort than kind of the, the payback you would have got to bring in the data, right? We were able to make the, the, the analytical solution without actually bringing in the data. So it's really making sure you're not bringing in data just to bring in data. You bring in data because it's going to add value. And in this, that particular case, we didn't need to. And if it's accessing the event logs, um, how would pro a process mining tool pick up um, like people actions? Uh, someone's asking specifically things like phone calls or tasks that don't occur in the system. Or I'm also thinking if it's not like a case management or a type of system that's designed to capture those transactions. Thoughts about how to capture or connect that yeah you, so you, you'll see this quite a bit with inside finance processes uh you'll see it from an offline schedule you know whether it's the reconciliation file in excel or just you know kind of collaboration with other finance departments and what we always say is first you, you'll use the traditional process mining to identify what part of that transaction is, is taking the longest right so if you say, you know, step A to B is taking three days, and then you have two ways to really identify what's happening between step A and, and B. And that is, A, you could do it the old fashioned way through interviews, understanding what, what's going on there, understanding, you know, what the steps they're taking. Or B, there, there is another technology that a lot of process mining tools have that's called task mining. And really what that is, is it, it would be recording somebody on their desktop, understanding what they're doing and what systems they're going to, if they're cutting and pasting things from Word to Excel, or if they're going into another system. But really, you know, in that particular instance, and what we always recommend is first start with a traditional interview, start to understand. And then, then if you need to go to more of the traditional, I shouldn't say traditional, the modern kind of task mining, that's when you go to it. So an example of that is uh, we, we did some work in, in the financial crimes department of a bank. And for them to that do investigation, it goes across, across websites, across investigating systems, credit reports, things of that nature. So then that particular instance, interviewing really wouldn't give us the data we needed to understand the impact what we needed to do there was task mining. I hope okay. they are. Um, before I turn things back over to Nina, I have one more question for you. Um, how do people talk about this to their supervisors, their bosses, how to get that executive buy-in? Uh, since you said this is a newer technology, uh, you know, the education about why we would need or want something like this. Um, how should people approach those conversations? You know, I, I think the, the, the first step is really demystify the cost of it and the complexity of this. Everybody, you know, looks at newer technologies. I remember this, I used to do a lot of RPA projects and people would say, RPA, robotics, robotics is so expensive, right? But with process mining, as I said before, it's not a big technical lift, meaning you don't need to bring in a lot of data. So a proof of concept really takes a week, two weeks to show you that we could actually build out a process map. 
And then secondly, you really have to make sure when you're conveying uh, to executives why this is so important is to have that business case. And one of the great things about process mining and when we do business cases is we ultimately know the output of what we're going to get from the data, right? So for example, I, I earlier I said Maverick spent, right? Just from understanding the amount of transactions this client had, the spend categories, we were able to put together an estimate of what that business case was. And what's great about it is then with the analytics process mining, we want to prove it out. In fact, we actually found more value than an initial business case. So it was great. We went back to the original business case and we said, look, this tool works so great. Not only did we prove out that, that, that we could capture this value, we found more. Okay. Um, I just want to say again, Anita's uh, about to come up and share a slide with some of this. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, Marty wrote an article for us um, that's part of our Jobs to be Done ebook. And so I encourage you, um, there's a way that you can go up and uh, sign up. This ebook will be publishing next month. Um, and, and so sign up now so to be sure to get a copy of that. Uh, so you, Get a little more explanation from Marty through that article, but also reach out to Marty directly. And um, I, I've really been enjoying this conversation. So I'm going to turn it back over to Nina to let her wrap up with a few things. Thank you, Teresa. Yes, um, everyone, as Teresa mentioned, Ains November ebook, Jobs to be Done and Tools for the Jobs, Operational IIM for Organizational Success takes a deep dive into honing skills in three key functional areas, process improvement, information access, and data extraction analysis. Information management professionals can create for themselves an indispensable role in moving the organization to its higher goals. So if you're interested to know the how, sign up today and be one of the first people to get the inside scoop on best practices and tools needed to do these jobs. And as Teresa said, yes, Marty is a contributor um, to this ebook. So sign up now to get notified as soon as it's released. Now, as we bring this webinar to a close, a last few minute reminders, we've recorded this webinar so you can catch anything you want to hear again in a recap email that'll be sent within 24 hours. A link to the resources for this webinar was put in the chat you'll find a copy of this presentation as well as additional resources through that link. Don't forget also to take our feedback survey and let us know how we did. Now, before we wrap up, I would like to ask Teresa and Marty if they have any last minute comments or questions regarding today's webinar. Marty? Uh, first, again, really like to thank everyone for their time. Really enjoyed this. Uh, one last comment I have is, is truly, if, if anybody's interested in this topic and like to just have a discussion about it, please connect with me on LinkedIn or my contact information. Be happy to have a call with you or even, you know, we do it via email. But I've really enjoyed my time today. Teresa, it was great to have this webinar with you. And uh, thank you. Absolutely. And Teresa, do you have any closing comments? Yes, I do. Um, thanks to Marty and DocuLabs for sharing your knowledge and expertise. I really enjoyed hearing this overview and um, better explanation for me um, of what process mining really is and how it can help organizations. And that's a big part of what I got out of it. And I'm just seeing this as one more tool um, in our toolboxes to help us information professionals um, align what we need in, in information management to align with the business strategy and the business alignment and, and having that come together um, to help businesses do what they need to do. And uh, uh, so thank you, Marty, for sharing your insights and helping us learn a little bit more about process mining. Absolutely. And I also want to add for the audience, any questions that weren't asked will be sent to Marty. So if you're not, um, he will receive your questions and if you have any additional questions, you can reach out to the, con um, the contact you provided. So again, a big thank you to our underwriter, DocuLabs. Without support from our solution providers, we wouldn't be able to bring you free educational material. 
So thank you everyone for joining us today. This is Nina from AIM saying, see you next time. <laughs>